So, welcome. I know we're the last session before lunch and everybody is starved. <laughs> so I won't be too long. Um, let, let's see how, how we can work this out. So this talk is about like options and a bit of trade-offs. And it's not about saying like everything is rosy and working, but it's more trying to help you make the right decisions or avoid the wrong decisions. So let's dive into that. As with many other stories, it started like a long time ago and I thought uh, a more fun intro would this one be? Yeah, I, I'm definitely missing the music, but I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> because that would definitely make it worse. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, so, what are the right choices and what even are the options? So, we have Logstash, um, for those of you who are very old, who might still remember that. Who is using Logstash, just to get a quick overview? Okay, that's quite a few. So, um, you're also old, just like me. Um, so back in the days, we, we started with this. Um, we, we stacked the Elks, and that's kind of like how you ended up here. And for those who have not seen or are not using Logstash, the, the general idea is of Logstash. You have some data source, and then you have the Logstash pipeline, and you have many inputs to get data from somewhere. You have filters to change, process, parse, um, correlate the data in a filter. And then you have one or more outputs where to write the data, which could be Elasticsearch or could be an S3 bucket or many other things. So you have basically inputs, filters, and outputs. And you have this entire pipeline that you are running. And that has been working well. Um, you can build pretty much anything you want. You can connect it to almost anything that you want. You can write easily your own input, output, and filter plugins. So you have lots of options here. I think the number one feedback or thing that people say about Logstash is this one. <laughs> yes, uh, otherwise if you have other complaints, let me know and we can discuss about that. So that, that general statement, Logstash is slow. I, I would say yes and no. So I think the startup time for any JVM process, there is some startup time, so that might be slow. Um, that the Logstash event loop itself is pretty tight, where you have most of the issues normally is you write a bad regular expression to, to parse your data. Um, what is the plural of regex? Re no, the, the plural <laughs> of regex is regret, um, because that's what normally ends up with your um, parsing rules, um, that you don't know what's going on anymore, and those are often the things that make it really slow. So what normally is making logs as slow is you have a plugin that is not very well written or you have a bad regular expression. Those are normally the, the things causing the frustration, which doesn't solve the underlying problem, but it's not necessarily Logstash or the event loop in Logstash itself. I think on any reasonably modern laptop, you could easily process like 2 million events per second in Logstash itself. It's really more about writing the right regular expressions and then how well the plugins that you're using um, are built. So that is what is kind of like causing that problem. Um, and this worked. And then the question was just like, how do we get the data from all our systems? Because you probably don't want to put the JVM on all your servers from where to get the data. And there are multiple options. It could be Fluentd, but our option was always Beats. Who's using Beats? Just to get an overview of that. Okay, that's quite a few as well. Um, so we. We have Beats, um, which was another product that we always say joined the family. And then we, we tried to make up um, or move over from the, the ELK acronym. And you know, then we came up with this one. Um, that's the, the ELK, B, or BELK, because you can see it's an ELK, and it's a B, and it's a great combination. Um, but we kind of gave up on those because um, after those four letters, it became very hard to add more letters and make up more animals. Um, so this is, this is the furthest we are going with animals and, and painting that. Um, so the, the idea behind Beats is very much like you have a lightweight shipper for one specific purpose. Um, so Logstash is kind of monolithic. You have Logstash and then you maybe add additional plugins, but it brings a lot of plugins by default. So it's more like a big thing that can do almost everything out of the box. The beats kind of like take the opposite approach. It's like very targeted things. Like you have one for tailing log files, basically, and one for ingesting metrics and doing health checks, getting Windows event logs if you really want to be on Windows. 
um, to get network data, to get security data. So you can get all of these, um, and you end up with a zoo of, of beats or agents that you need to roll out and configure and then get the data from, which is nice if it's targeted um, and you only have one or two. If you want all of them, I'm less sure if this is so nice. Like, yes, it's very small um, to install, but if you run all of them, all of them will also open their own network connections, which has some overhead. Um, so if you have, like, let's say you want to monitor 10,000 systems and you roll out all the beats on every single system, that's a lot of components and connections and things. Um, so this is just something for the downsides. But this has, a st in terms of lightweight chippers written in Go, um, is working very well. By the way, since everybody is so quiet, Either you're so attentive, great. Um, if you have fallen asleep, um, wake up. If you ask good questions, I'm throwing socks at you. So if you have socks at ah, uh, sorry, if you're not, not, not if you have socks, but if you have questions at any point in time, just raise your hand and stop me. Um, because it's really much more about those trade-offs and the interaction than just me telling you, do this and do that, and this is so great, because that's not the most value for everybody. Um, the question now is, do you use beats with Logstash? Um, those who use both, um, do you use them to, or who uses beats with Logstash? Who uses beats with, okay, who uses beats without Logstash? Okay, that's fewer. So many of you use Logstash. Um, the question is, why? Do you have to? No, you don't. Um, there might be totally valid reasons why you want that. Um, and so, or let me restart it over. I think for a simple use case, you don't always need Logstash. However, if you look at the very large customers and users that we have, many of those have Logstash for either historic reasons or valid reasons today still. So this is a totally valid combination. It's just potentially an additional like complexity because you need to run and monitor multiple components and you need to scale them independently and you need to make sure those work well together. Um, we have some capabilities around like enriching, filtering and working on beats if you really want to, though I have a hard time recommending that personally, is you could even write um, JavaScript on beats to change something in your events so you have all the power, um, but that means you have all the power with JavaScript, so up to you. Um, but you can enrich events, um, like for example, you could get like Docker metadata or the AWS uh, metadata where the beats are running. You could delete or throw out some events already on beats if you don't want to forward them, so you can save some network bandwidth and processing power in a central place. So you have some of the power of Logstash in beats, but not everything. The other thing that beats brings are, um, you have the beats modules, where it's basically the entire pipeline of like where to collect, let's pick Nginx, it knows by default, on Ubuntu, the Nginx logs are in var log, Nginx, access log, or error logs. Then it knows how those are structured by default, how to parse them, and it can provide a dashboard how to display them. So these are the modules to do most of the work for you. With Logstash, you were doing most of that yourself, writing regular expressions, for example. Um, who enjoys writing regular expressions? <laughs> yeah, that's the Stockholm Syndrome, right? You get <laughs> so used to doing that, that you say like, yeah, I want to get up in the morning and I want to write more regular expressions. Um, so you can do that. Um, maybe you don't want to, so that's kind of like the workaround for, for Beats modules to avoid that. And Beats modules um, also for parsing mostly rely on Inges pipelines which run in Elasticsearch. And while it doesn't have all the features that Logstash has, it can reuse a lot of the so-called processes here. We call them not filters, but processes. Um, for example, you can run grok, you can run a date filter, you can do a set or delete or whatever in ingest nodes as well. So you can just run that in Elasticsearch. And you don't necessarily need beats for that. Uh, sorry, you don't need necessarily lead, need Logstash for that. The, the main downside right now, why this is a bit tricky and we're very well aware, is that the ingest pipeline monitoring is not as good as what you have in Logstash. So if you want to figure out like, how much CPU are you spending here or how much of your time are you spending here in an ingest pipeline, it's very hard right now. Um, but that is something we are working on right now and I hope that, I think the colleagues call it observability, I would more call it monitoring, uh, but we will provide some more insights into those pipelines to make that debugging easier. Um, so now we have the agents and the modules and everything. And we had so many agents that people were like, why do I need so many agents and why do I need to install all of this? So 
then we kind of like almost swung the pendulum back again. Now we have elastic agent. Is anybody already using elastic agent? No. Um, so agent is the concept that, or the common name that many are using. Um, it's the idea is you have one agent to rule them all. So the agent is like the puppet master that runs the beats under the hood. So you only install one binary, and you can instrument that one binary, and it does everything for you under the hood. Um, so it's beats, and then we have a lot of integrations. Um, they are structured slightly differently than beats modules, but the idea is kind of the same. You can get like where to get the data, how to process it, how to build the dashboards and everything. Yourself, we have a very extensive page with, I think, a few hundred um, integrations by now, where you can basically figure out, oh, we're using one password and I want to get some events from one password, or we have a .NET application and that's alphabetically sorted and this would be a very long list. So you have a lot of these integrations, where do you get your data from, how do you process it and how, you, how do you show it. And what is kind of like nice, it goes a bit further than what the Beats have been providing. Um, so we, we bought the security company a while ago, so we have some endpoint protection as in stop this crypto locker or whatever ransomware thing um, and throw it out. We can run OS query. Everybody knows OS query. It's like, it's a thing that collects information from your system and then you can query it in an SQL-like fashion and you can figure out what packages are installed, um, what, what is the latest version of that, what users are on the system. Um, we have eBPF integration into that, the extended Berkeley, Berkeley packet format, which you probably know from network collect or collecting network information, um, but that is both for security and monitoring on the operating level system important because that is basically like a small VM that runs in the kernel to extract information. And then we have OPA. Who knows what OPA stands for? Yes? Yes, that's which color do you prefer? I'm not sure it's really blue, but there you go. Yeah, um, since you didn't start asking questions, I'm trying to turn this around now. <laughs> um, it's like in school, you, you don't do your work, then we'll turn it around. Um, so the open policy agent is basically a standard. Um, it's also a CNCF project where you can define how to query something. Um, either the Kubernetes API is a common target or, for example, uh, your AWS API. And it can say you should be in this state or it continuously checks, is this thing working the way it should be? Like, do I have an like an open S3 bucket somewhere. Do I have the right permission set on the Kubernetes API or whatever? Um, so all of these can be wrapped in, in agent. Um, the other big thing that agent is adding to the, to the game is that, who likes writing YAML? <laughs> okay, that's very few. That's like, yeah, we haven't reached the Stockholm syndrome yet. Um, or maybe some of us are more YAML engineers. The, the thing is what, Agent is also doing, it can, from a UI in Kibana, instrument how to configure those agents. So you can basically click together your configuration rather than writing the YAML. And depending on where you stand, this is either the greatest thing in sliced bread or it's the worst idea ever. <laughs> um, so those who have good automation and like to have everything in version control think this is really dumb and I would never touch this which is fine because you don't have to, but those who don't have so much automation, especially in the security world, like a lot of people don't have that strong automation, and they really want to have a central place where they need to see, you basically enroll every node or host or server um, once with an agent, and then it can fetch a policy that you configure in Kibana, so you write the policy into Elasticsearch, and then one of your agents run as, runs as a so-called fleet server, but it's the same binary, which is a bit confusing at first, but it's really the same binary for simplicity. Um, and then this fleet server gets the policy from Elasticsearch and can roll out the policy to all the Elastic agents out there. And then those run those. You can group them into different groups for what to collect, uh, and you can update them, but basically an agent enrolls and then gets the policy from agent and then continuously sends the data to Elasticsearch to store it. So you can click all of this together and have it in one place and that is kind of like the automation you can build on. If you think this is a horrible idea and you want to have everything in YAML, um, you can totally do that. It's called standalone mode. And sometimes people are a bit confused, like will this, is this a temporary thing? Will this go away? No, this is 
they are for good. So this is the way you can still push the YAML file into Agent for configuration. It will pick it up, um, with or you use whatever automation you use, um, and that will pick up that configuration and make it work. Um, does that kind of make sense how that integration works and what problem it's trying to solve? So we have a lot of customers who are really interested in that. We also have people who really try to push it because I think right now our scalability is like we can manage around 50,000 agents or so, but we have people who want to do more. Um, and we'll, we'll get there. So things that we are working on right now, we are re-architecting a bit in the background, you won't see that, um, to support more agents in parallel. We don't have things like disk spooling, um, agent doesn't have Kafka output yet. Those are all coming, like we're filling those gaps um, to move forward. And then the final thing I wanted to talk about is open telemetry, but I'll keep it very brief because I think we had a couple of talks about open telemetry in various shades already. Um, my main takeaway is that traces are kind of like where everybody is focusing on and what is really going well. Metrics are like coming along like a a windy breeze and logs are more like crawling for now. Um, we are still in the progress of our process of donating um, our schema format, uh, how we format data into open telemetry. The pull request is open and being discussed and hopefully we'll get that merged quite soon. Logs are not really there yet, um, but hopefully we will get there. And then <coughs> open telemetry is like another option to get the data. Right now I think it's more a combination because you have your instrumentation of the application that none of the other things that I was talking about uh, were really covering. Um, but maybe once logs are a full thing, then kind of like things start to change a bit. Um, but this is an ongoing effort. So to kind of like wrap it up, the one thing that I think we are seeing a lot is there's this, I call it the ingestion inertia. It's like once you set up ingestion, you never want to touch it again. You don't have to raise your hand if this is you. Um, <laughs> We have seen this um, a year ago, there was log for shell and we had customers reach out to us if they had very old systems to get fixes. And we had big banks and things like that reach out to us and say like, we're still on Logstash one point something. Um, what do we do now? So it shows very much that once you build it and it works, you rarely touch it. And I think we were always trying to move things ahead very quickly. And we're trying to adjust to that a bit more, that there needs to be a better migration story, um, which we're working on, and also kind of like to pull everybody along in that journey. So even if you're on Logstash 1.x, like what is the next step or where to go from here um, to see that. And because all of this is kind of confusing, we have this handy flowchart of what to use. And because this is a bit small, I've broken it up into two pages now so you can see it. Um, so in the flowchart, this is the current recommendation of what of the, the different things I've shown you to use. So if there is an agent integration, um, use Elastic Agent and then you can either mo manage it in standalone mode or um, you roll it out through Fleet. If an Elastic Agent integration is not available but, but it's only available in Beats and a Beat module, you can use Beats. Um, and if that is available, you can use Beats and then we will decide if we need processing and we'll get to processing on the next slide. If none of those are available and you need to some custom job, um, you can still use Logstash um, and then get your data from Logstash. Then for processing, what you have is you have a processor like Beats on the agent for enrichment, so you collect the Docker information or host information, whatever you have there. Um, in the Inches pipeline, you can parse the data and maybe correlate it there. We also have an enrichment policy where you can look up a value from another index, for example. Um, we have runtime fields by now where you can parse at runtime the data that has come out, or you can do something in Logstash. So you have a couple of options where to go, like if you need to get the data initially, use the processor. The standard converter, we would go for Inches pipeline. If you need something at runtime, you can do that as well. If you need something heavier or something else, like, I don't know, correlate from a JDBC database or relational database through JDBC, um, use a Logstash plugin. And then you can store the data in the end. Unfortunately, this entire flowchart is a bit complicated, um, but that's where we are um, at the moment. Does all of that make kind of sense so far? Is that flowchart available in the document? No, I think it's somewhere in the documentation. <laughs> that's actually... <laughs> <laughs> that's <not a> good <laughs> <question>. <laughs> you, you don't want socks or...? I want them, uh, but... Uh, Wait, which one? Which color? 
There you go. Oops, sorry. Um, yes, so this is, we added that I think one or two months ago to the documentation, so this is available online. Um, we have generally a lot of documentation around like scaling agent, this flowchart, um, generally where things are and where things are going. I think if you watch, for example, the development speed, you will see that most of the development right now is in, in agent. Beats is still getting the support, but it's not like most of the feature development is mostly in agent right now. So that is where more, more and more of the features end up. And Logstash is, I think, finally getting a bit more investment again as well, because it has been lingering, and I think from a product point of view, we want to get rid of Logstash for a long time, but reality has shown us that this is not happening, so Logstash is here to stay, and we'll need to double down on Logstash a bit to make sure it's still in the right place and moves forward, because most of the very large customers that we have are on Logstash, so that's it's not going away anytime. Like I think from a product point of view, they Product managers thought it was like a very nice cleanup to get this rid of this old dog stash. It's kind of bulky and JRuby is kind of a weird thing, but in reality that's not happening. So um, log stash will need to be around, or at least that's to my knowledge and the current plan. Um, any other questions? Yes, please. Yes. I can repeat the question. So the question was um, for, for ECS. And maybe that's actually a good point. I, who knows what ECS is? Yeah, OK. That's <laughs> Let me first fix that. So ECS is the Elastic Common Schema. It's basically a naming convention um, for how to name fields, it, which sounds very boring. But it does allow you to do a lot of things. So you can correlate all the different data sources. Um, and you can build a lot of logic into Kibana to show you, like, once you know, like, this is a Kubernetes namespace, you can do things with that and show that in visualizations in a specific way. So it's a naming convention, um, and we have somebody, I think, working pretty much full time uh, on that naming convention and, like, how to map it to fields and how to make it efficient and cover all the use cases. That is Elastic Common Schema. And we are in the process of trying to contribute that. Um, so we want to have that standard and that mapping in open telemetry to also, because that will then nicely play into what we have with the other integrations. So we've, we've spent some time to move Beats and Logstash and Agent from the start into ECS and follow that format. Now, if you collect your application data with the ECS standard, then it will nicely play together with all of these. So you can mix and match all the different signals and they play together. Um, I'm not necessarily sure this will lead to a, a conflict. The exact state if we, I don't think the plan right now, and you can see that on the GitHub issue, is to kind of like give ECS um, into the project and then give it up. But we will keep developing it, and then we will potentially, over time, um, contribute upstream changes again as we evolve ECS. But we are not giving up or throwing out ECS, depending on how you define it. Um, but it will evolve because we use it for other things that what OpenTelemetry is doing. It's just a very handy feature to have that standard in, in OpenTelemetry as well, so we can easily correlate the data from OpenTelemetry data sources with the other signals that we have. So it makes a lot of sense to put them on the same foundation. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody's awake. Um, <laughs> which color? Do doesn't matter. There you go. Um, final pair of socks. There, there is a. Or you were just volunteered by your colleague. <laughs> because your colleague wants socks. <laughs> we do hand them out at our booth as well. It's a bit borderline, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. Ooh. Um, you're welcome. Um, we have way more socks and other stuff at our booth. Um, please come by and take some, because otherwise I have to carry it back to Vienna. <laughs> and I only have hand luggage, so I don't want to do that. So come by. Uh, we have socks left. We have other things. Um, we have the Lego for the, uh, we have the raffle for the Lego. So we also want to get rid of those bonsai trees. Um, so come by for those. Any other questions? Final chance. Otherwise, it's time for lunch. <laughs>